Okay, welcome back. And this is the order fulfillment example, journal entry number two. And so there's been a, a few changes since the last journal. As you can see here, we have GitLab set up. Uh, GitHub wasn't really set up well for this kind of project, so I just set up a GitLab for it. And I went through and made it a little bit more documentation. So there's some installation details. We slightly changed the virtual machine configuration, so it points to port 8080 of localhost. So more people can use this without having to uh, deal with some edge cases. Then I went ahead and made documentation for each of the domain events that we're planning on building. So these are very familiar to you, I'm sure. These are the same domain events from all the previous videos. We have order was placed, order was confirmed, etc. And um, this is basically the extent of the documentation upgrade. Now, what we have here is we have the ability to place an order and it will go all the way through every layer of the application until it raises the domain event and stores it in the event store. It'll dispatch the domain event and any listeners can listen to it. Well, we don't have any listeners yet, but that'll come uh, in the next journal update. So let's take a look at some of the code changes. First of all, let's do the order was placed event. Now, this is very basic. We just are accepting these values the same as in the documentation, and we have getters for them. Of course, in addition to that, we have a serialized and deserialized methods that allow us to put those into uh, basically a flat array, or a, really, it's really a nested array form, but it's as flat as absolutely possible. And then a deserialized method that will take that flat data and build it back up from domain objects. Now, this is one approach to serialize and deserialize uh, to and from the database, but of course, you can use external serializer tools, etc. This is just one that always works, is always modifiable, and you know exactly where to go to change it. So that's a valid way to do it as well. If we look at the spec, now I'm using PHP spec to do testing. The way I'm doing the testing currently is we have the values up here at the top. Then what we're going to do is we're going to define that we're going to let this be constructed with, and then we're going to take those values and build them into domain objects. That says that when we instantiate this order was placed object as a spec, then we will actually have these domain objects built and put into it. Then we're gonna test if it's initialized. So all of these values are going to be compared against what's inside the object. So when we create the order was placed event, when we instantiate that object, we pass in an order ID. This is telling us that this order ID should equal value and then it creates a new order ID object. Now, should equal value is a custom PHP extension that I built to help myself test exactly this kind of stuff. So it knows my conventions for testing equality. In this case, it just calls the equals method to verify that it's testing equality or to, to verify that these two value objects are equal. And it will throw an error if they're not. This can be done also with an array of value objects as seen here. Finally, we want to know if it can be serialized and we try to serialize it, we should get back this structure. And if it can be deserialized, we try to serial, uh, deserialize it through with this data. And when we get it back, we should get value objects and every domain bit should be according to this. Now this is a lot to test, but it very seriously makes sure that everything's wired up correctly and that it can serialize and deserialize correctly. So now that is one event I don't have to deal with and I can just keep getting the benefits from that event, stream processing, etc., uh, into the future. Now, we also have created the order aggregate. Now this is a very simple aggregate and all it has is it's a static factory method place and we play, uh, raise order was placed. We don't, we're not really checking any uh, business logic here. In the future, we will add more business logic, like perhaps making sure that there's more than one product. Uh, this products array may become a collection of products. Um, we'll see how it goes. But for now, when we place an order, it raises this order was placed event, and it's going to then apply it to this aggregate. So the order ID here is gonna be set from here. And when we need to find out the aggregates ID so that we can store everything in the data, uh, in the event store, 
then we can just return this order ID. So this is a very simple Im implementation. If we look at the spec for that, you can see we did the, the same trick of putting all the data up here. Then we go ahead and say, construct this through the place method. And then we want to make sure that when we flush the events out of this aggregate, it contains the new order was placed event. So this is another PHP spec extension that I've built so that I can verify if two events are the same. In this case, I know that the order needs to raise this event and I know what data should be in that event. So I can just pass in an event that is equal to that event and it'll just recursively check it. Right now, the code for that uh, PHP spec matcher and their tests are pretty rough, but I'm going to work on updating those another time in the future. Uh, but that's the order aggregate and the spec as we have it so far. Now, we also are working with the concept of a place order command. So here we have place order. And this command is an abstraction, essentially, of a method call. Or a method call could be an idiomatic form of a command. So basically what we have here is we have an, a class that's another data transfer object that represents what we want to happen. Um, and what we want to happen is to place an order. Now, as of the time this is recorded, we don't have a video or a set of videos up on the commands and command handler and command bus stuff, but that's going to be added soon. And I'm going to add a link to a blog post that describes it more um, in detail that I've written uh, a little while back, but uh, more video information on that is coming. And the way that that's actually implemented, it's interesting. Let's look at the place order, like controller place order. And what we can see is in the controller method where we are calling place, it's actually just taking the information from the request, and in this case, some from the session, and it's creating the command that will place an order. This command is executed by the command bus. So when this command is thrown into the command bus, it'll be paired with the place order handler. And this is where the domain interactions are going to occur. See here, we're not injecting an order ID that's a string. We're instead, see here we have an order ID generate. Um, here we have a session ID customer ID, and this is a string. So this is a good example here. If we go into the handler, we can see here we're injecting customer ID, but the place method takes a customer ID object. This is interesting because the place order command actually takes in just a string, just a nothing, uh, no, no special type. And it's going to actually generate the domain object in the getter method. This is an interesting boundary between what we get from, for example, the web request or the command line and what we inject into the handler where all of the domain interactions are coordinated. So here we just get domain objects. We say, hey, place this order. And then we want to store the stream of events from that order. And since the events that are pending inside the order aggregate are the state changes, since in event sourcing, the events themselves are the state changes to those systems. When we store those stream, that stream, then that's when the system is actually updated. Uh, part of storing the stream is storing it to the event store and then dispatching it to a event listeners. And that will then trigger things like read model updates or handlers that might send email, that sort of thing. But we don't have that right now. But what we do have is the ability to place an order. And thank you for your order here. But if we go and look at the database, we can see that we have our domain event and it's serialized. And if we go to pull it out, it'll be deserialized. So this is kind of where we are with this entry. In the next entry, I'm going to build up a read model using an event listener so that we can create a listing of orders that have been placed so that one of our employees can go and confirm one of those orders.